Today we're going to look at more uh, details about the tape formats on the 9-track tape. So I've created some example files. Addresses.txt, employees.txt, and purchases.txt. Here's an example of addresses. So each line is considered a record and they are terminated by carriage return line feeds at the ends here. So there's three records in this file. That's approximately uh, 50 or 60 bytes long. We'll look at this detail a little bit later. Employees.txt have four records. And spaces are used to separate the uh, fields. It's just standard ASCII. And then we have purchases.txt, which contain uh, four records. So this is an examples on the desktop. So let's just keep that in mind. We'll start the tape drive program. And we're going to set up a writing procedure. So we have to select those files. So what I'm going to do is add the directory where they are in. So it's Windows, Desktop, Examples, and that is where those four, four files, three files are in Examples. Okay, so we're done with that. The file selection rules, well, we're just going to select all files in that directory, and we don't care about the dates of the files or anything. Now we're going to use fixed record length format. That means each record is going to be the same length. I don't care about binary data. This is all ASCII at this point, so we're looking at text data. And carriage turn line feed set the ends of the records, as we mentioned already. Now for this small example, in order to be able to see the data on the screen in one place, I'm going to reduce these sizes. So for example, I said that the record length was between 50 and 60, so let's just say uh, 128 bytes, or uh, 64 bytes. That's a nice number. So each record is going to be 64 bytes long. Now obviously some of them were less than 64 bytes. They will be padded with uh, the ASCII character blank, or hex 20. Okay, so each record will be 64 bytes long. Whether or not it fills that space. And we can identify how many records to put in a block. A block is a continuous set of data that can be retrieved later on by COBOL or other programs. So for example purposes, I'm going to set it to 128. This means since each record is a maximum of 64 bytes, only two records are going to fit per block. So in the case where we had three or four record records in our file, we're going to have more than one block in that file. So that's what we're going to see. Uh, the fixed source text length is used uh, when you uh, don't have a carriage return line feed present and you just want to ensure that the record is going to stop at 80 characters. In our case that's not applicable because we're going to stop before 64 bytes anyway. So that's fine. And we're not doing any limiting here. Okay. Labels. Okay, let's put some custom volume labels here. Me, myself, and since we're on YouTube, let's just put YouTube in there. That's the volume label of the entire tape. Now we have to put uh, file labels. Um, so we're just going to put here, uh, again, me and test, just for example. Uh, we don't care about the dates. I don't think the clock on this computer is set anyway. So uh, we'll just ignore that. But it, you can encode the date into the uh, headers. And it's going to be ASCII, of course. File naming. 
we are going to use the source file name. So as you saw here, they will be addresses, employees, and purchases. It'll probably be truncated because I think six characters is the maximum, but we will see. So that's what we're going to use, the source name and extensions. Tape positioning, we're going to rewind the tape because we're not appending data. We're going to start brand new data from the beginning of the tape with this example. Options, we don't need to do any data conversions or space suppressing records or anything like that. Um, let's see, option X, space suppress text records. Well, that means it's going to be padded with spaces if the uh, record length is longer than the actual record that we have present when the carriage return line feed is encountered. Okay, we're ready. Let's write the tape. Notice it says 11 records were written. Now, the number of blocks and bytes are quite large. We're going to see why that is. There are three files and 11 records. So let's just see if that makes sense. Are there 11 records? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, there are 11 records. So everything makes sense. Now let's have a look at this tape. So we're going to Tools and we're going to use the Tape Browser. Now, we're at the beginning of the tape. The first file is called File 0. And remember, we, and, and, and this block is fixed at 80 bytes. Uh, I'm going to use decimal offsets because that's easier for me. So there's 80 bytes here. Here's the volume label, me, myself, YouTube. Uh, we don't need this. Uh, Pepsi deck conversion, so we're going to get rid of that column. So we're just looking at ASCII here. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, so this is the first header on the tape. It's always there. It's written automatically by this program. It's just to identify the tape using IBM standards. That was the uh, industry standard. Okay, next block. Block one is the header for the file. Well, this is the address dot text. It's slightly truncated, but there it is. And there's probably the dates and encoding in there. And uh, I believe I put a me and a test. So that is encoded in here as well. Next block. And again, it's 80 bytes. That's standard. This is all overhead, you see. And then there's another 80 byte header block identifying the fact that we have 64 bytes per record and 128 bytes per block, which basically means two records per block. And again, this information is there, so in case a program needs to read this tape, it knows what to do uh, with this data. So uh, for a COBOL program, for example, we'll know what to do. So never mind that right now. So that's the second, that's uh, block two of file zero. Then there's a tape mark. And now we're at file one, and look what we have, 128 bytes in the block zero, because that was the limit. And we have two 64-byte records. And if you check, okay, Smith Joe Donaldson Ace. Smith Joe Donaldson Ace. So these are the 220. And notice the padding, the hex 20s, the spaces, because the record size, 64, is probably here. So it's padded even though there's a carriage return line feed, which are stripped off. It's just used to identify the end of the record. And then padding is done because I chose the record size to be uh, 64 bytes. So anyway, these are two records in file number one. And this is block zero because I deliberately set it to uh, 128 bytes total, which is this byte here. So we have to go to the next block. And there's the remainder of the file, the record. Now notice, because there's an odd number of records, this block is shorter. And it, ha it takes that liberty to save tape space. So the last block is not 128 bytes. It's 64 in this example, because there's only one record. OK? So that's the end of this data. So let's keep going. Next block, there's a tape mark. Next block. File number two, block zero, 80 bytes. This is a header saying it's the end of address.txt. 
And this is the end of the data that said it was 64 byte records, 128 bytes blocks. So this just sort of closes the preamble. These are the uh, postamble uh, data, the headers for the file. And that completes the file. Then there's a tape mark. And now we're at the next file header, 80 bytes, which identifies purchases.txt, which is the next file in our uh, examples directory, which we, which we actually it isn't. Okay, so I guess, I guess the order it's written on the, the disk is a little differently. But anyway, the first one was addresses, where it purchases now. Okay, purchases.txt, and again, it's got the header, me, test. Next block. Another header showing 64 byte records, 128 byte blocks. And here we are. There are the two records. Let's just check that. Purchases. So yeah, pajamas and iPhone and their prices. Here they are. Again, padded with 20s, uh, blanks. So, uh, okay, we're at the tape mark file. Okay, next block. Now notice it's not 64 bytes. We have an even number. We'll go back again. So you can see there are two records here, and the block is the full 128 bytes, and the next block is also, whoops, I went too far. The next byte, uh, next block is also uh, 128 bytes because there are two records. There were an even number of records in there. Yeah, there we are, socks and gas. I don't know what I was clicking. Okay, so this is the second half this, this is the second block. So previous, block zero, pajamas and iPhone. Why am I typing previous? Oh, that's why I got into trouble. I'm clicking the wrong thing. Okay, so pajamas and iPhone, these are the first two records. Block zero, next block, block one, socks and gas, which completes the purchases file. Okay, next block. Now again is the postamble. 80 bytes, it's the end of purchases.txt. Next block, it's the end of the 64 byte record, 128 byte block thing, okay? Next block, tape mark. And we have file six employees, so it's the middle file, I guess the alpha, the way it was written on disk, it was in the middle. So let's look at this, we get again four records here. So let's look at them. So this is the header for employees.txt, next block, the header showing 64 byte records, 128 byte blocks, and here is the data. So let's look at that, just make sure it's right. Employees. So we've got uh, staff engineer, secretary, accountant, and janitor. Staff engineer, secretary, okay. And the second block, block one, 128 bytes, because it's an even number, there's your uh, accountant and your janitor. So it's all there and matches our records here. So this is a very good example. Okay, now let's go to the next block. Then we have again the ending post amble header, uh, end of employees.txt, and again the end of this 64 byte, 128 byte thing for ID purposes, and then come two tape marks, which is the end of the tape. So that's, that's the whole volume of tape me. And uh, we're done, so let's just rewind our tape. And we're back at the beginning again. And uh, yeah, so there you have it. Now, what you saw here was a streaming backup type thing because what you're doing is identifying files and you're writing them all to tape at one time. This is not what I call a start-stop block writing thing and that's what I want to do. So on the uh, Arduino board what I'm going to do is write code to allow me to accept serial data coming in which would be these records and as a carriage return line feed is encountered I want the Arduino board to write a block to tape and then stop so it can be live 
uh, live data record acquisition. Because in the old days, when people were on the punch cards or they were typing on a terminal, the tapes would be capturing this data because computer memory was smaller, much, much smaller than the tape storage size. So you could accommodate a few records and then your, your memory is full on your computer. That's why tapes were used for memory manipulation, not just storage. So instead of doing just backups or, or file um, uh, storage, it would actually store blocks, records of data live as they came in and you could retrieve them as well. Um, for sorting and merging, then you would use full files and multiple tape machines. But anyway, this is uh, a project that's uh, in the works, and uh, we're going to see how, uh, how we can uh, do this. But anyway, I thought you'd be interested to see just how a simple tape example and the format of the tape is, is done on IBM-type uh, tapes, on 9-track tape. There you have it. Thank you for watching.